And this is explained on page 44, but sometimes when it's explained generally to start with, it's hard to understand. So we're going to develop a formula. We're going to start with specific examples. And then after doing a couple specific examples, look for a pattern. And if we see the pattern, we're going to see why the general formula that they have on page 44 works. So developing a formula. for a geometric series. So I'm going to start with the following series. I'm going to start with term 1 is 3, add 6, add 12, add 24, add 48. I'll go up to there. Can you see that these numbers are part of a geometric sequence? What's my r value? My r value is 2. Because each term is multiplied by 2 from the previous term. Now, unlike an arithmetic series, if we added them backwards, none of the numbers add up to the same thing. So we can't use that as a pattern. Instead, what we look at is what would happen if I took every term in this sequence and multiplied it by 2? If I doubled everything, does it make sense that my sum would be double what it was before? If I doubled every number, what I would add up in the end would be double what I had before. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write out, if I doubled my sum, and I've got an S here on the left saying, that's what my sum is. I'm going to get, well, instead of having a 3, I'm going to start with 6. And instead of 6, I'm going to have 12. Instead of 12, 24. Instead of 24, 48. And instead of 48, 96. Now, do you notice that all of these ones are the same? So if I would take the second one and subtract the first one, might even be nice if I had written, maybe I'll move this up to here, I'll move this up to here, I'll move this up to here, and write it that way. If I would take this one and subtract this one, can you see that all of the ones inside the red box would disappear? What I would be left with if I subtracted the whole thing is from the top, I would still have 96. And once I subtract the bottom, all these ones will go away, and I'll still have to subtract three more. Can you see that? If I take the whole top, which is 6 plus 12 plus 24 plus 48 plus 96, and I subtract the whole bottom, the 6 minus 6 would be 0. 12 minus 12 would be 0. 24 minus 24 would be 0. 48 minus 48 would be 0. You can imagine a 0 here because there's nothing to start with. And 0 minus 3 would be minus 3. And I'd have 96 and there's nothing there. Minus nothing would still be 96. And on the left side, I had two sums minus one sum would leave me with one sum. So adding them all up will equal 93. And if you actually added them up, 3 plus 6 is 9, plus 12 is 21, plus 24 is 45, plus 48 is 93. So now we're going to see, does this always work? Or did it just happen to work because my r value is 2? So we'll look for a pattern. So we're going to pick another one. We're going to start with another, another value. Sum is Five. I'm going to now, we did r is 2, so why don't we try see what happens if r is 3. So if I'm multiplying by 3, I'd have 5 plus 15 plus 45 plus 135. Should quit now before the numbers get too big. Is that 405? Okay. Now, instead of taking my sum and multiplying it by 2, 
In order for those middle ones to match up, I'd have to take my sum and multiply by 3. So I'll take each of those values, multiply by 3, and I'll write it on top to begin with this time. 3 sums would equal, well, the 5 would become 15, 1545, 45, 135, 135, 405. And now the 405, when it gets multiplied by 3, will be 1215. And once again, all the middle numbers are the same. And when I subtract them, and I can imagine there's a 0 here and a 0 here, I'm going to get, well, 0 minus 5 would be negative 5. All of these would cancel out in the middle. And then I'd still have 1215. But on the left side now, I don't just have one sum, because if I take three sums and subtract one sum, I'd be left with two sums. So I have that two of the sums is equal to 1,210. So how am I going to figure out what it adds up to? Divide by two. Ooh, maybe. So we get 605. And if you added them up, sure enough, it's equal to 605. We'll do one more. What number do you want r to be this time? Four. Okay. r value is equal to four. I'm going to start with one so my four times table feels more comfortable. So I'm going to have one plus four plus 16 plus 64 plus 256. And then if I multiplied everything by 4, well, the 1 would become 4 plus 16 plus 64 plus 256 plus 1,024. And once again, all the numbers in the middle are the same. And when I subtract, okay, there's a 0 here and a 0 here. I'm going to get negative 1, all these ones cancel out, plus 1,024. And 4 sums minus 1 sum would give us 3 sums. So we have 3 sums is equal to 1,023. Divide that by 3, and we're going to get... 341, is that right? Check that one. Yes, good. So, a pattern is happening. Now we say, what happens if I didn't know what R was? What happens if I didn't know what my first term was? How do I take the pattern that I'm noticing and create my own formula. Are you noticing that every time that the r value goes up by 1, the amount of sums you have less is just 1 less than that? And you'll always have one more term there than what you had. So this is what is at the bottom of page 44. If we started with our sum, which would be term 1, and then your next one will be term 1 times 1r plus term 1 times 2r's plus dot, dot, dot. And you could go up to however many terms you have. So your last one will be term 1 times r to the n minus 1, right? Because your last one here is just tn, which is your formula for tn for a geometric sequence. Now, if you multiplied this whole thing by r, it would copy all of these ones, minus that plus sign, and then you would have one more 
which would be timesing by r one more time, so you'd have t1 r to the n. And now when you subtract, what we noticed before when we subtracted is that you had r minus 1 sums. And all of these ones canceled out, except you have a negative term 1 plus a term 1 r to the n. And so if you wanted to find out what the sum is, you could divide by r minus 1. Now that's the idea of where the formula comes from. On your formula sheet, in fact, at the bottom of the page, on page 44, they have this same formula written this way. What is an equal sign with a slash through it? It means it can't equal. So r can't equal 1 because then you would divide by 0, and that dividing by 0 isn't allowed. OK, so how is it that we came up with this formula, and the textbook has this formula? How are they the same? Well, if you wanted to have a t1 out in front, you could do that by factoring out a t1 out in front here. And if I want to have 1 minus r instead of r minus 1, I could do that by factoring out a negative 1. So I'll, if I factor out from here on the top and say, well, there's a t1 in common, what happens if I take out a negative t1? A negative t1 times what is negative t1? It's going to be 1. A negative t1 times what is t1 r to the n? I'd be left with minus r to the n. If I factor out a negative 1 on the bottom, instead of r minus 1, it's the same as 1 minus r. Because if I would distribute, negative 1 times 1 would give me negative 1. And negative 1 times negative r would give me positive r. And a negative divided by a negative is positive. So because I have a negative both there and there, those would cancel out. And these formulas, whoa, these formulas are identical. And this is the formula that you have on your formula sheet. Sometimes some formulas in some books will have the r minus 1 on the bottom. Used to be that on your formula sheet, you would have both formulas, one with 1 minus r and one with r minus 1. But they're the same, and both of them will work exactly the same for figuring things out. The reason this textbook has the 1 minus r is it lends itself better for what we're going to look at in section 1.5 with infinite geometric series.